Hey everyone, RC Floggy Man, welcome to the latest episode. Uh, this is an awesome one and a special one as well. We've got ourselves a brand new camera, so hopefully we're gonna have a lot better uh, visuals. And um, I'm together with Matt Evans from Lighthouse RC today. Um, and we're gonna be doing a two part series on weathering a body. I've got a, a Land Cruiser Troopy in there that you might've seen photos before, it's a yellow troop carrier. And that's gonna be hopefully weathered and I know absolutely nothing about it, however, Matt Evans does. So I'm gonna pick his brain, we're gonna have a bit of a chat, and he's gonna show us a bit of the process of weathering a body from start to finish. I think it's gonna be pretty exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, I think this is gonna be the start of a great thing for RC Floggy Man. Better visuals, better content, and if I can get my act together, I can get better at it too. So let's go for this one. Let's check her out and see how we go. RC Floggy Man, come for the ride. This is gonna be awesome. So, Matt. Yes. I'm here today with Matt Evans from Lighthouse RC up on the Sunshine Coast. Um, he's going to show me and us the process in regards to weathering a body. Um, Indeed. I, yes, I've got that troop carrier in mm -hmm. there and uh, yep. one day I'd like to attack it, but I know nothing about it. So, I know that you've got a lot of experience in this and I know that you've got a like a bit more of a hand on what's going on. So, yep. without further ado, mate, I'd like to get you to show me and us the process of weathering a body. First thing I just want to ask is, what what sort of, what was your incentive to sort of um, have a go at the weathering? Was it that you'd had experience before with other things? Or was it something that you thought, I'm just going to give it a try? Actually, the, the way I came into weathering bodies was purely for the fact that um, someone came and asked me to do one. Um, no. And I've um, played around with a lot of diorama stuff in the past and um, done a lot of weathering in that kind of scale. And obviously with hard bodies, as, um, as the people who know who I am love, like I love the, the super scale stuff. Like I love the stuff that's mm -hmm. like a 110, looks like, it, looks like it should, drives like it should, yeah. and you have to adapt your driving to suit the conditions based on the car you're driving. So I, I love those challenges. Um, what kind of got me into weathering was, yeah, literally I had someone come and ask, hey, can you weather me up a body? Um, and yeah, so I sat down for a few weeks and just did some research on what weathered, what weathered bodies look like for that particular car, what, yep. um, you know, like kind of, yeah, like where the rust would sit, where... Yeah, I was going to say, did you actually sort of like, you'd be looking at exactly where you would normally get weathering? Yep. Yep, like yep. on the bonnets and things, yep. Yeah, so it was like, yeah, going through that and then just looking at different ways to like create rust, like you've yeah, got... To mimic. Yeah, 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 to mimic it. So you've got weathering kits. Um, I used to do, with the um, RC stuff, I used to do um, the 116 tanks that shoot BBs. So I used to weather those up and that'd be like, you know, getting a heat gun and getting a plastic, but like a plastic, um, one of those knife, plastic knives that you get from Coles or whatever for a barbecue. Yep. And because it's so rough and flimsy, that when you go to, you get a heat gun, you heat up the guard, and then you use that to kind of soar into it. And what it's doing is it pushes parts in, pulls parts out, pushes yeah. in, and it really gets a ripple through the guard. It and it really creates that battle torn look. And then using different weathering methods like um, to create rust, I would get some bolts and leave them in like the, the caps of these, but then fill them up full of water. So it was literally, I'd let the bolt go rusty. rusty. Yep. And then I would get a small, like a little cotton bud and I'd dab real rust onto the car. So yes. it, so I'm like, what better way to cause rust? Then, um, yes. And so obviously that was a much longer process. There's other ways to create rust, like um, using salt and vinegar on metal. Um, oh, so yeah, if, yeah. You, if, you pour, uh, if you pour vinegar on it and you pour salt on it, and then you leave it out in the elements, um, the salt and the vinegar really eat into the metal. Yeah, and then yeah. that, creates, that creates a real rust yeah. Um, and or like you can either brush it on if you want a full rusted panel or if you just want um, like rust stains or rust stains yeah, yeah like you can literally just like pour it over the top and then just let it all flow down leave it out in the weather and you will get the natural that natural yeah rust running down the panel yeah. so that's unreal yeah. yeah so there's plenty of ways to, there's plenty of ways to create it um, yeah I guess obviously too like we are working with a polycarb body um, on this build um, so for those uh, who don't know, so the polycarbs are these flexible, clear ones, um, so they're nice and pliable. Um, and because 
there's no metal in this, we can't apply that effect to it because it's not going to adhere and it's just not going to really do anything. It's not going to oxidize and cure and Ox rust and all that kind of That's stuff. That's the word I was thinking before, oxidizing. Oxidizing, yeah. yes. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, that's the kind of the, the thought on the rust. All right, yeah, no worries, okay. And yeah, well, I was sort of like curious as to as to what was the uh, process and, and as you said, there's, there's, there's sort of quite a few ways, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. All right, well, I reckon we get some on the go. Right. And um, yeah, we'll we'll get the process happening and we'll see how it goes. Sounds good. All right, cool. So we're having a look. So this is the body we're going to use. Um, so I'll bring it in a little bit closer to the camera so you can see it. So it's a MST J45 body. Um, we will give, that's the card or what it looks like. Um, thanks, Bruce. Uh, so you can buy those um, in two ways. Obviously, you can buy the whole crawler. Um, from, um, you know, I guess have a chat with your local hobbyist. We supply them as well. Um, so they're a full kit uh, build, portal axles, really, really cool comp truck. Um, set them up for dual steer, dual winch, dual everything. Um, around that $7.99 price point. Um, but, or you can just buy the body. Um, these do fit fine on TRX4s, so even your 12.8s or your 324 uh, wheelbase. Um, these will fit all right. Um, we've put them on Habeos, on the HPI FJs, um, the TRX4s, Sports and Broncos. The new ones, the um, the old Broncos, which are still 313 wheelbase, Elements, of course. Um, I have one on one of my Element trucks in, in the gun metal. Um, so yeah, so really cool body, very detailed. They come with all the scale accessories, as yes. you know, Bruce. Yeah. So you get the snorkel, you get the windscreen wipers, you get wing mirrors, you get bumpers, you get like nice chromed out light buckets. Um, little grill piece that goes yep, in. grill pieces and really cool sticker set so you can get um, so you can have you got just the window sills um, or you've got full um, like full masks masks to go over other windows to so give it that tinted look um, and then obviously for your bonnet clips and all that kind of stuff it's all there so about to get into cutting the body um, I don't know about you Bruce I don't know how uh, how many bodies you've cut oh, I've cut a few you cut a few yeah um... If you've got the right tool, you'll be okay. But yep. I have found that sometimes you do have to get something to, for the for the finer details. Yep. Uh, in the end, I did it probably because I didn't know what I was doing. I ended up sanding a few bits mm -hmm. um, before I got things like these smaller, yep. smaller appendices. But uh, yeah, yep. uh, don't use snips. That's probably a bit of an overkill. Yep. Side cutters, they're probably good. And just those where you get in, you just need to snip the edge out and get to it they're okay i wouldn't use them as a general tool yeah um and, so yeah i guess on the topic of side cutters uh now i've used these as well in the past for doing uh, polycarb bodies um because when you get bodies like this um and they've got just little indents because they're so detailed on the side step here when you see the finished product and we get some up close photos of the body you'll see um what i mean detail, yeah. but um yeah there's like the the vacuum forming on this is very very good so you've got a, a couple of little things where the the body kind of comes in and then it just dips in and in that little dip you may find that you know if you're using scissors you're kind of cutting across it and then you run the risk of like putting a crease in the lexan or or whatever so side cutters definitely can have their place for that um i personally don't use them very often um my my preferred tool of choice is a Stanley knife. Yeah. Um, now there are, as Bruce mentioned, so you've got curved scissors. Again, not sure if you can see those, but at, towards the tip here, they do curve up. Um, they're good for like for your drift bodies and stuff for getting around the wheel arch um, to help create that. Again, um, I personally don't use them. I just use the, the break off um, Stanleys. Uh, and the reason I like the Stanleys is because you can literally break the point and then you get a nice, uh, nice sharp tip again. Um, but yeah, to me, I do scissors, straight scissors, curved scissors, yep. um, all that kind of stuff. Or you can get your little hobby craft knives with the interchangeable blades and um, plenty of other ways to do. One thing too, cautious with scissors, when you're cutting inside and you're trying to cut up. Now, as you cut up, because the scissor blade length is too long, um, you're going to run the risk of actually putting score marks further up the body. Um, so, because you're only trying to cut you're only cutting with the i guess the base of the scissors just here that point is that what you're trying to cut with but you've got these two little tags here that are going to be scratching around and scuffing up inside the body and you're not going to know until you do um until you've made the cut and you have a look and you see those white little score marks yeah depending on the paint colors metallics usually can absorb some mold 
scoring, but flat colours, no, nah, you'll yeah. you'll see it. Um, so you may be better off with a, like a smaller, yeah, small set of scissors, like a smaller set. Yeah. Um, and, and the titchies. And the, and the titchies, yeah. Like I honestly would recommend people have a go with the with the blade um, now and with with cutting bodies. Um, just before I get into it, you're not trying to cut through the lexin with a knife. All right, I'll show you what we're going to do. So all you're doing is you're putting a score in it, and then you fold it, and it'll it'll snap, and it'll give you a nice clean line, depending on how steady your hand is. If your hand's not steady, that's cool. Bring it to your local hobby shop, um, and that's what we're here for. Um, you know, if they you know if they repair things, then they can they can definitely help you out with this kind of stuff. Yeah, well, I've um, just learned something right there and then because I didn't know that once you score it and snap it, that it cuts. So yep. That my last one I did, I cut the whole way. So there you go. Yep. We've already. Yep. We've so already picked up. yeah. So what we'll do is we'll quickly um, we'll quickly knock. Um, so the good thing is like these are they, these are qu quite a simple. They're a very boxy body, so there's not a lot of curves, detail, and stuff like that that we've got to follow the lines on. So we'll um, we'll get into that, and um, we will uh, yeah we'll get it cut. All right, cool. Get it cut from there. Excellent. Sounds good. All right. Cool. So we're gonna get underway and we're gonna cut this body out. Now it is not a race, okay? Like there is the excitement with the new body. Yeah. Just take your time um, because it is much better to have a nice even lines all the way across um, when you finish the job, as opposed to having to get a Dremel or a sander out and try and fix it. lift everything up to kind of balance it all out. So what we'll do is we'll get started on this one. Uh, so again, just, you don't need the blade out heaps. Just as you can see there, I'll try and bring it in close to the camera so you can see it's only out probably about a centimeter on the sharp edge, a couple of mil on the top edge. Um, and then all we're going to do, um, make sure you guys can see, is we're just going to score. Yep, yeah, that see that. Yeah. Now, as you guys may not be able to see here, but um, I'll bring it in, there's a little step. Um, you can, the sun's kind of catching that one, which is cool. Now, when you get to a step that drops down, you don't want to drop the knife down the step because that's when you run the risk of it slipping and you either blow a hole in the bottom edge or you, um, or you'll end up just, as it drops down, you'll put a, a nick in the body or you'll, yeah, you'll end up with a crooked line. So I always cut up. Um, so in this case, when we're going to this little edge, just, oh, where, where, where the light can see it, there it is. So this little edge here that you can see, it's a bit shiny. So we're gonna cut, because um, it steps down from the edge. So as it comes down that way, we're gonna cut back, back up, up to, it. to the line that we um, did because as the blade travels up, as it gets to the edge of the curve, you'll feel that the pressure in the blade, it gets lighter because the angle's changing, um, less cutting surface. And yeah, that's when you just start to ease off the pressure and just- yep. And don't sort of like follow through with a big- Yep, that's exactly right. Yep. So um, so we're just going from the bottom of the of the cut. Yep. And um, sorry for you guys on camera. That's okay. Um, it's... I might actually bring this in a little bit closer for these. Yep. Just get a bit more of a, of a better look, possibly. Yep, so as you can see, so from this step here, um, that's a good good angle to see how much it comes up. So what we're doing is we're cutting from the bottom. And we and again, we're not cutting through, it's just a score. And as you can see, I'm rolling, rolling the knife down with my hand as it goes around the edge, because you wanna make sure that you don't just get the big slip and then put some really cool custom streaks on your body. <laughs> and then once you've done that, that curved area, then we go back down to the straight. So again, you, you're moving the body all the way around. Here's another example. We're getting to the back of the shell. Uh, now I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these. Um, so I'm comfortable to roll down. So I'll do it on this corner. But as you can see, I'm dropping the edge of the knife. So I'm still cutting with the same bit. And then, so I've gone around the corner and then again, flip the body over. Um, Little panels like this that tell you to cut it out for battery trays and all that kind of stuff. That's the last thing that you cut out. Don't just cut it because you think you need it because if you don't need it in the car, then it's better to have it there because it gives you more integrity across the back face. Yeah. Um, so again, so we're starting from the edge of the curve. We're just going across. Now I always use um, root finger, whatever they call that, whatever the technical term is for it. But the middle finger, um, I always use as a, as a guide and just have that on the body because it just helps you know, it just helps me, um, 
yeah, stop myself from like slipping or from, you know, curving this way because you can feel, you can feel on your finger as you start to walk um, across the face. So, um, so I just do that. Um, it also helps, it will help with the, um, when you slip because as you can see uh, on the camera there, the, the base that I'm cutting now is bowing in. So you sort of have a bit more control. A bit more control over the blade. Yeah. And, and again, we're not trying to rush this. Yep. We just want to follow the line. And again, I'm not trying to cut through it. I just want to just give it a score. And this truly is amazing to be seeing this, Matt, because this is a process I didn't know. Yep. It's, um, yeah, it, it's just, it comes down to just different techniques. Um, again, I have found this to be, if, you, if you're really used to um, cutting shells, and whatnot. This is a very quick way to do it, especially with drift cars, with your um, your proline bodies as well, because they're quite they're quite squared and everything like that. So it's um, yeah, it's just a nice, simple. You can just cut straight down the hilux um, with your rounded wheel arches as well. I cut across them first, and then when it comes to cutting the wheel arches out, um, which is not applicable on this one because the it's just quite square and um, and boxy. But I'll put the the wheel arch or, or the nose of the car over a table so that the inside of the shell sitting on the table the rest of the car is kind of off to the side and then from there you support. cut to the yeah you cut from the center to the outside then you flip it around and cut from the center to the outside you're not cutting all the way around because again if you slip you're going straight across your front quarter panel yeah. um and you're just gonna you're, gonna you're gonna fudge it before you start and if it's um, bad, there's no coming back. No, there's not. And uh, and I've seen a lot of people turn nice bodies into just basher bodies because of just a simple knife slip. Oh, because of a yeah, yep. mistake. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, so um, all right. So we've got around. So we start. So we've we've got our uh, a place that we started. So in here was the start of the guard, and then so we've already just scored all the way around. So now, just so you can see, so with the scoring. All you got to do is, um, if you want to bring the camera in, Bruce. Just bring it back in again. Oh, sorry about the wobble, people. So you can see, you can kind of see, um, it's a bit hard with the camera, but you can see there that this line's now more distinct. So you can see the score on there. Once you've got the score, you just simply bend it just like that. And then you'll hear a click like that. And oh, yeah. then now you can literally just That's peel amazing. it out. And you, and you have whatever your knife has scored, You've now got that nice clean edge and you don't need to, um, there's no tidy up afterwards. That is amazing. So just nice and simple. Again, um, I wouldn't say you don't, you, I wouldn't say you need a steady hand. A lot of hobbyists have the shakes on some form. Um, don't necessarily need a steady hand. If you're, if you're a little bit wobbly with the hand, just take you, just take longer. Um, That's again, me, I've got the wobble, so yeah. And uh, again, so now we got to, to this edge here. Um, so you've got two ways of doing it. Um, so you, I follow the curve round. And again, using my index finger on the bottom of the shell for stability, because I don't want the knife to run away from me. Just score it down to the step. And as you can see there, like the blade, um, because, it's a, because the corners go down like that and then up, right? My knife is going from here right across. So I'm not actually cutting this bit out. This, that could be the place where you use your side cutters and you just get the tip of the side cutters in and you just cut to create the join in the knife, uh, in the where you've scored. Or again, best practice, turn the body around, score up to the corner. So, and if you're gonna do a line, do the whole line. Don't just do, don't just start in the middle of the step and then work backwards. Start at the edge of the step or start at the edge of the surface that you're scoring and then do the whole thing. And the reason you're doing the whole thing is because you're then going to get one nice clean line. You're not going yeah. to have, um, you're not going to have a, um, you know, a, a line that's going this way and then a line that's going this way and it kind of comes up and it overlaps and you get that kind of real weird. That obvious. Yep, because that's going to make it a nightmare when you go to fold it and you create that snap then you're going to be snapping on that V, which means you now have a uh, have a jag. You've got a sand back or sit there with your knife and like a, like you, the old school peeling vegetables, just sit there and just score it back. And again, if you if you go too much, you're going to get the round edge or you're going to get the slice in and yeah. um, you don't want blocks of cheese taken out of your body. That's yeah. for sure. So um, I think mean, this is a bit of a ride, eh? This, this, is, this is most entertaining.
So you guys just saw then how quickly that little nick as I, as I went down, purposefully doing that to show you how quickly it can go wrong. Um, hasn't gone wrong, because as I said, I've been doing this for a while. But as you come down the edge, because the edge is chasing and you're going from that part of the blade to the very tip of the blade, because you've got less resistance, it just skims straight across. Yeah, and that's where, that's where you're likely to come unstuck. So now we're going again into this little V. At the, uh, at the at the start of the step there. So again, so we've done there there. So what I'm doing is I'm going to drop the knife, like cut down the edge of the step, drop it in, and then again you're lifting the knife up. Still got your support finger there. You're going across, uh, and the reason I like knives is because when it comes to going around corners, it's very easy to roll a knife around. Uh, when you use scissors, it's very hard to get a nice clean cut without putting your score marks in the body. So um, I'll show the camera there. Um, I have, if you can kind of see just down here where the knife blade is now, I have purposefully run over into this bit here. This is just wasted um, Lexan. Uh, you can use that for paint sampling as well. Definitely keep bits of Lexan because if you're trying new paints, whether it be um, the Replo, Repco Duplicolor or the Autobahns Auto Spray touch-up paint, um, and you want to see what it's going to do, these are the best ways to find out yep. whether your paint's going to react with the paint that you're using as well as the plastic that you're using. Yeah. Um, because if you use an enamel, you're going to spray it on, it's going to look good for a few seconds before it literally just starts to liquidate and dissolve on the bench. Yeah. So, and there's um, even a process too, I believe, in actually painting the Lexan. Uh, I know one thing that was taught by me was in one process was applying one coat yep. before you even start and that helps to adhere. Yep. To yeah, so, to yeah, so when you do your, your paint stages, depending on, um, like I'll, I'll jump more into this a bit later on, but when you're doing your painting, you want to, um, you're literally just doing a dust coat. And there, like, there's a lot of paint that goes on there that you can't see. Um, but what that does is the paint sticks to the paint. Um, definitely for crawler bodies as well, when you're using stuff like this, you can use your duplicolors and, um, and I guess your auto spray, auto barn paints and all that kind of stuff. Um, now the reason the PS paint is really, really good is because of the elasticity in it. Um, the uh, Proline do the brand Spastics. Um, Spastics as well for their Lexan. Um, if you use the TS range of paints, which is still, it's the same, I guess, molecular structure. It just doesn't have the elasticity in it. Um, so when you have a rollover or an impact and the body takes a crumple like that, you run the risk of actually cracking the paint. Yes. Once yes. you crack it, then the paint is going to lift straight off. Um, and it's going to keep lifting off, and then you're just going to sit there, and it's just going to go. So, um, yeah, so I'll talk more about the painting process when we get there, but we'll get this body finished off, um, because this is not a uh, definitely not a, uh, a hard one. Yeah, that, that whole process of that, as you're saying, scoring the plastic and then folding it, that's 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 just fantastic. It, uh, yeah, definitely. And, and the line, like you said, the line is just... And the reason I prefer the knife blades too is because they're with the injection moulding, they've got the edge of the mould there. So these knives kind of just drop in. And if, you're using, and if you're using the right amount of pressure, the knife will just follow the little channel that it's in. So you're going to get pretty straight lines anyway. You're not yeah. going to have to worry about... Um, you know, because even if you wanted to go to the um, extremities of having opening doors on a polycarp body, because you've already got those lines there, you literally just have to trace around the door around the, yeah. and then leave the hinges there and then open it up, let the put the stress crease in there, um, then cut through the hinge and then make your own hinge or just even a bit of a strip of this off cut and then completely separate the door. Use a bit of polycarb, a bit of hot glue or um, Gorilla Glue from Bunnings, about 11 bucks for the little clear stuff. Um, you can put that on the inside. Uh, Gorilla Glue doesn't affect the, um, the paints. And then you can put that on, put another uh, dab on there, cut it short, put another piece on this side with a tiny little magnet, um, and then put a magnet on the door and put a magnet on the card so that you can open the door and you can close the door and the magnet yeah. will hold the door yeah, shut and right. you can get that kind of still scale look out of a polycarb body. A polycarb so body. you don't have to think, oh, if I want scale, I've got to, got to go to a hard body, no. But if you are going to turn this into a door, um, the brand is called Evergreen. They do um, like little plastic cards, uh, probably uh, I'd say like six inches by 12 inches. 
um, kind of thing. Um, Mr. Toys uh, sell them all. Um, most hobby shops who do um, scratch building um, models and diorama stuff usually will have all that stuff. And then you just cut out inner door panels, put them on the door to again give the door some integrity so you're not, when you pull it, the door's not just flopping everywhere because you really don't want to test how stretchy this paint is. No, no, that's so, right. Um, but all right, we'll get this one finished. Now, will we leave you to cut that there and um, and then we'll kick off the next stage? Yeah, all yep. right, that sounds good. Um, so what we'll do is I'll only got a couple of minutes left, so I'm not going to make everyone sit here and watch me do it. Um, so I'll put a pause on the video and uh, I'll finish cutting this. And we'll be straight back with you with the finished product. Excellent. All right, body's all cut out. Um, put our knives away, retract the blade. Nothing worse than an injury. Not to be workplace health and safety Nazi, but no. I've cut myself plenty of times. <laughs> yeah. I've put my body down on top of a blade, picked it up, put a score in it. Like just they're superficial scratches, may disappear. Let's not take the risk. I've, so, I've searched for parts in a tray, left the knife out and gone and broke the finger out bleeding. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, good 100%. Call. Cool. So we saw that little bit's done. So now once you've done it uh, and you've scored the body, um, you always push away like push into the shell, don't pull out. If you pull out, you're going to tear it up. Therefore, you have more of a risk of tearing into the body if you haven't cut it, scored it deep enough. Um, so you always push in because what you're doing is you're actually, because you've cut you've cut this side, if you're pushing away, you're pushing, you, you, you're kind of forcing the cut to peel. If you cut this side and you're lifting it up, you haven't cut this side, so it's got nothing to score on. So you're actually protecting what you've scored and you're just going to peel into the and, body. Yeah, because it's going to tear wherever it wants to. That's it. Uh, yep. Path of least resistance. And usually on uh, nice molded bodies, path of least resistance are these thinner bits of polycarb, which are usually your door tracks, door sills, trimming, all that kind yeah. of stuff. So all we're doing is we get it and then you just simply just push in. If you want to, um, which I do as well, it's just kind of just, just you hear that little crack as the polycarb lets go. And then again, you just push in. Um, and you just follow everything that you've kind of done. You don't have to be too gentle with it, only be gentle with the corners. Because again, because we've done the process of rolling the blade, the pressure from us is going to change. A um, little bit in it, and this is gonna be a good example. Now, you guys, I'll bring it up to the camera so you can have a look. Now, as I've folded it, you're starting to get a white cloud in here. So what that means is I haven't scored the body enough or I haven't scored it at all. And that's in one of those little grooves that you can see in there. So as I fold it, you can see that it's getting little white stress fractures. So what we're going to do is before we we can do two things. We can either come back to it and you can just like twist it like a, I don't know, just kind of twist it and let it kind of spiral off and then just remove the tag or get the blade out. And just have another go and just have another little score yeah. yeah just have another little score and again so now because i'm doing i've already done two cuts um and i just need to join them up so this is where you can use your side cutters if you want which on the other side if i need to i'll use the side cutters to show you how to do that um what i do here is i've got now i've got my still got my support finger here but i've also now got my thumb on the tip of the blade because i'm i'm now pushing I'll let yep. Bruce see that so you can show other people. Yep. So I'm now using my thumb to push and I'm using this finger to stop. So it's a push, it's, I'm not, it's not a push pull, I'm not using the knife to cut now. I'm physically pushing the blade into the divot and then gonna push it by just releasing the pressure from this hand and the finger yep. to, to hop it back out so that we can marry up the cuts. So and you're not... basically allowing the blade to go down, yep. in, follow the line, yep. and come back up where you've got full control. So we're pushing the blade into the line. So we're pushing now the blade into the groove. Yep. So we'll have to score, and then you're keeping the tip up nice and high. Yep. Um, so it's right in. So I'll let Bruce, I'll, I'll show Bruce so that he can yep. um, kind of see what's going on. But And that's right down into the bottom yep. of the valley. That's it. And then we pick it back up. And the good thing is, because you're using your thumb to push, You've got total You've control. You've got total control. Total control. And, yep. and you can see where the tip of that blade just yep. sort of popped right down. And, you can, the and we can still see, because that's quite a deep indent, right, the blade is, this blood particular blade is just not getting in there. Um, so let's use the side cutter. So what we're going to do is, um, I'll get Bruce, if you want to bring the camera yep. in. I'll just bring that in a little bit closer. All right, so you can see... Um, this video is showing it up, well, the camera showing it up. So you can see the crease there and you can see the little white cloud. As I try and bend it, you can see that it doesn't want to break away like the rest of the body has. 
So what we're going to do is you're going, first thing you get, like it's a multi-step cut. So we're going to cut the edge of the body like that, because that then takes away from this lip. Then we're going to, um, you always try and cut off your, your flat side. So with these ones, because they're, they dip in that side and they dip in this side, not the ideal set of side cutters to use. You want ones that have a nice flat edge nice and then they edge. dip in on the other side. But again, um, doing this for a while, I like my like my odds. And you just nip. Now you don't you don't cut this tip all the way to the line. You cut you stop just before the line. And the reason you stop just before the line is now there's a tiny little bit in there. That you can see that's still hanging on that little that's that little tag that's now when we just get our knife out uh -huh, and you yep. put the blade through and you just just like that so a little bit of pressure just walk the blade in let the blade do the work yep and then you've cut it free and you can see there still you've got a nice a nice clean edge nice yep. straight edge all the way to the to the crease and then we're going to do the same now on this side now we're not going to start to bend it from the crease because you've got too much thick polycarb here so what we're going to do is we're going to go to somewhere where you've got a larger surface area like the front here and we're going to start by bending that and you can hear it all snapping and letting go and again it just comes straight away so you're not so you what i'm doing here is i'm pushing the body against me twisting because you don't want those little white creases going into the body that you can see on the edge here um if, if you can um try and i'm looking at the screen um yeah you can see here where my finger is like that little white stress creek, um, you don't want that in the body. So I'm using my thumb to push against the body while I snap it because that's going to put the stress back into here yep. where there's no support as opposed to into the body um, because these MST bodies are quite hard because uh, they are a good body. So you're not trying to do this in one go either. Don't just try and keep bending it the first time. You want to bend it and then you want to, and then off. There you go. And there you go. Look at that. So it sounds rough, um, but you may find because this body is quite, it's there is quite thick polycarb here, as you can see, like how much pressure I'm having to use to break through it. But you can see by supporting the body, the stress is going into here, not into here. Yep. Just like that. And then from here, use your thumb to hold it, and then you just simply just press down. And just do it nice and slowly, but you can see how it's just it's following the cut. Look just like that. that. Just like that. And then again, so you do you're doing this little bit slowly. If you do get a couple little stress lines right on the cutting edge, like there's a very faint one, don't necessarily worry about that because we have got a patina, we are gonna weather it. Um, if it was you going for the showroom finish, then yeah, once you start to notice that it's actually curling the polycarb down and not following the cut just sit back and just score and that score little bit again, again, again yep. and again. Um, but now that we've got more hanging off, it's going to make it easier on this side. So again, we're just pushing down, holding the body up, um, and we're just gonna follow this all the way around. Now, if you haven't scored it right, I'm doing this on purpose, that, that, that's what happens. Uh -huh. So that's a tear. That will happen every time if you go that way, as you can see how easy it was yep, for it to just it tear. just went bang, yep. Um, all right, so that's why we don't pull against it. That's why you always push down. So we'll just, again, you're doing your big straight lines because they're gonna be easier to manipulate. And again, we're gonna have to have to rework that step. So you do it a few times, there you go, there's the pop. And then we just follow that line out. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a tag there to clean up, but that's that's fine. I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, if you're like me doing it a few times, that didn't cut through. That was the same as the other side. You can kind of support the body and just push it and the, the tear will run out and run back in. So we've got another little tag there to cut off. But again, um, I'm, I wouldn't be concerned by that, but definitely always creasing it first because you always want to soften, um, yeah, soften that, um, that line that you scored. Now, when you get to corners, now this is where you where you do the um, you fingers in. You're holding the body, and you just slowly, just just very slowly, using your fingers to kind of push against each other. That's how much pressure I'm using, because you just want to follow the cut. You don't want you don't want to be ripping against it because it will tear. Um, 
So we just, so because you, you can't bend that, because it's rounded, it's, it's just too hard to try and bend it. Um, and also, well, yeah. Look at that. So there we go. Um, and then, as I was saying, to clean up your little burrs, just grab your knife like you're peeling. And again, holding the body and you're supporting it. And then you follow your line because you can see where you've scored. And that knife should just very easily, like that. Take that off. Just take that off. So, a couple of passes, job done. I uh, got another little one here. Again, so the thumb in to support the body because the body's the part we don't want to damage. Now, we're just taking these little edges off. Uh, now, if you are pedantic and you did want it like exactly like following the curves, you can sit there and follow all the marks out. Or if you've got a Dremel, just run your Dremel around the edges. Um, me personally, I do. Uh, I run. I take my time to Dremel it out. Um, but again, not necessarily. Um, again, for a patina look, not necessarily a uh, a bad thing. Um, but you're just sitting there, and you cut, and you're always cutting from the inside. You're not cutting this way because the blade in your hand, you can't see your line. You always cut from the inside because you can see where you've scored. You can see where you want to go, and yep. you pretty much plan the journey. See where the cut starts. See where the cut finishes. And then you, yeah. and you're just using just your hand pressure. Let the blade do the work. If your blade's not getting through it easy enough, um, swap your blade out. Or with these breakable ones, which are really good, pull it out, snap it off, and go again. Yep. But um, there we go. We've got the body all cut out now, so you can see. So it is a really nice detailed 40 body. I would highly recommend anyone who wants to do a 40 series um, jump in and grab one of these MST bodies. Um, they really, really are. Um, a cool okay, thing. So now with this here now, mm -hmm. so we've got that body and we're getting ready to do the prep on it. Yep. So what would be your inspiration? What would be your your way of looking at this now and working out uh, the process of where you want to rust? It would be like because you've seen all the drives, for example, rusting on the bonnet and, and on exposed higher surfaces. What's yeah. your... Uh, your sort of take on that yeah so how i would like how i would like start to build the process like obviously when you come to the paint side of things you don't want to rush this because you really you only get one shot at it um you can wipe all the paint um off by using uh nitro fuel if, for those of you that don't know mm. uh 25 nitro fuel on a towel and it'll just take the ps stuff off doesn't affect the polycarb and it won't harm the body no oh, okay. no, no, no. Yep. but it's a heck of a cleanup because it's very oily um, so once you've once you've really cleaned it out, then you've got to go and use washing detergent to degrease it. Um, yeah. But then also too, you've lost all your stickers and you've lost your window masks. So it's a massive process to to redo it. Yeah. Um, so you kind of don't want to rush. Um, now for people who've seen those cars at shopping centres where the clear coat's peeling and it's getting kind of like sun cancer and all that kind of stuff from um, being exposed to the elements and the ha and like and hail damage and stuff. If you have a look at cars with big panels, um, your rust is going to form where the weather pools. So on on a forty series, um, like I would I would assume that the weather is going to um, pool um, around like all your high points. So across the top of the roof yeah. where these sills are, probably on the top of the sill for the sun damage because it's the highest point. So it's closest to the sun, so it's going to get hotter. Um, places like your bonnet, the tops of your your tops of your guards here. Um, and um, maybe from the windowsill down the door because you've got like a raised uh, um, a raised section here as well. Um, but what I also do too is, um, you know, Google's your friend. So just jump on Google um, and you have a look at um, what, what it is that you want to do. Now, I will um, go through and so having a look. So here's... I'll try and I'll bring it over to the camera so you guys can see. So this is one of the um, one of the pictures that I found online. Uh, so if you have a look there, you can see uh, you can see like where the, the whoop, well there's the other one. You can see that the um, let's zoom right in. Um, it's going all weird on me now. That's right, but that's where the edit button comes in. That's it is. <laughs> All right, so you can see here that this is one of the photos that I've used. Um, so you can see on the side of the panel here, uh, which is obviously exposed to the elements, on the step, the top of the guard, as I mentioned, um, you know, the, the, the sides of the panel that are, are curved down aren't copping too much um, sun, um, but just where the, where the water's likely to pool in a weathered event 
or get exposed to uh, the elements. And then uh, the other one, just from a few different angles, um, you can see here um, by looking at, um, so the front lip of the bonnet um, and then the yeah. sides, the rust, you can see, but like along here around the window, it's still probably the original paint on some of the side panels. It's still quite the original paint. It's um, it's where the weather's hitting it. So, so after having a look at what, um, I guess what the options are there. So you'd go back and you think, okay, cool. Um, we're going to we're going to do some weathering to the roof, not so much the sides, um, to the tops of the bonnet to the front of the guards, because obviously too, as the car is driving, this front face is copping all the water um, all the way along. But again, it won't start rusting until it's left to sit um, or the paint's cracked and the water gets in, but then it's gonna be as gravity, so it's gonna be coming down. So um, it's, yeah, it's going to be running from the top down. So that's where you see those lot of rusty cars with the water, as I was saying, when you pour the stuff down the side, so you get your water runs. Right from the um, mirror and the door yep. handle and the fuel cap yep. and all those. That's it. Yep. yep. So all, all the, all the things that, um, you know, will be exposed to different elements. So, um, so that's the process, um, you know, I guess of finding, um, now I'm not going to try and replicate those because, you know, like I'm, we want to make this, you know, we want to make this unique, um, and its own thing. So what we're going to do is we've, we've got those, we've seen the areas that we're going to rust and we've kind of thought um, about what we're gonna do. So the first process is going to be um, obviously prepping the body. Now, um, every time I go to paint, um, use soap, um, like, uh, like a hand soap. Uh, now, sometimes hand soap can be, depending on the soap, it can be good. Um, the ones that moisturize your skin are really bad because they put the oils back in mm. there, so you're gonna leave oily fingerprints. Um, if you're not too worried about it, again, dishwashing detergent, it's got a degreasing agent in there um, for your saucepans and stuff. So that will take the oil out of your fingers. So you're not gonna leave fingerprints all over it. Again, a rusty patina look, probably not gonna be too much of an issue on this particular. Yep. Um, that's good to hear, because that's what I used on my last one. <laughs> yeah, yep. So yep. Um, so yeah, so what the process is now, we're again, not gonna make you sit here and go through it all, but uh, we're going to peel, because the paint process is inside and outside, so we need to double mask the windows um, all the way around. So the inside and the outside, um, peel off the um, the clear protective film that's on there and um, yeah, and then start masking it up, ready to paint. Now, normally with a Lexan body, the reason for the outside yep. plastic coating is usually yep. a, a normal paint job. You're painting the inside. That's correct, yeah. And then you're peeling the plastic off at the very end, yep. leaving yourself that beautiful glossy shine. That's it, and then you get your showroom finish. So you normally get with Lexans, yeah, you use your window masks on the inside, you paint on the inside, um, your protective film, as you can see the sticker on the back there. Um, that's just to uh, remind you that um, yeah, to protect the outside body from overspray because because um, because all these PS cans, even though if once you spray them on the outside, they come out as a um, more of a satin finish or not quite a semi gloss. Um, but obviously, when you spray them on the inside, it's the clear plastic that gives it that glossy look. Yeah. So when you paint on the outside, you get more of a satin matte finish. But we really want to degenerate the paint, so that's where uh, matte clear coats. And all that kind of stuff is um, is a good thing because it really gives it, as you saw on our Lighthouse RC page with the um, the blue rusted 40 series. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, how it all went that white chalky color, and that was just by using a particular clear coat to give it that real calcified look. Yeah, um, that oxidized. Yeah, oxidized, that oxidized. oxidized yes. Yeah, like for example, with the process I had when I painted the last one. Um, because it's clear mm -hmm. and you're painting on the inside, you've actually got to, the paint job was back to front. Mm. So I did candy apple red, so instead of putting the base colour then clear, it was actually back the other way, clear, colour, base. So And, and that's yeah. right, and that's what we're going to be doing with this one. So this is like the patina stuff, there is a bit more skill set involved because on the outside you're painting it like you would normally paint a car. So you're putting your primer down, you're putting your base colours and then your final colour on top. Whereas on the inside, you're putting your final color down first and then you're kind of going backwards. So you've got two different processes you're doing at the same time. Um, so it's going to be um, very interesting. Yeah, it's going to be, it definitely is. It's fun. Um, it's uh, it's uh, not a quick process, the paint. So it's five layers of paint. Um, so we're putting the, um, now it's up to, it's up to the individual um, how they do this. Uh, I prefer to put a clear coat on the inside first. Um, to really dull down the PS paint. Um, so put a clear coat down, 
then put the first color uh, down, then you obviously then you, your first color, your second color, and then at the same time, put the, but then on the outside is you just you put the clear coat on last. So you're kind of doing a normal polycarb process and then you're doing a paint process on the outside. So it's all the upside down, back to front mix up. So um, it's, it's good fun. It's gonna be great. It is. Yep. So what we'll do is we, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back with you shortly once we've uh, masked all the body up and we'll go from there. Fully sick. All right, mate, so you've got that masked up. You've mm -hmm. used the initial ones that come with the kit, plus you've also used yep. masking tape as well. Yep, so um, yeah, so we so used... Well, I'm going to hand this over to you and you can explain what yeah, the okay. process yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we did is, um, so the, the masks that come with the kit, um, they were the ones I used on the outside. The outside the, is what we're really focusing on. So therefore, because they're cut to suit the windows, um, you're going to get nice, clean edges. Uh, on the inside, we just use the um, the one inch um, masking tape. Um, and now with when you're masking up the inside as well, you don't have to worry too much about it being um, like flush with the window seals and everything like that, because again, you're painting inside and outside. So when you pull the outside masks off, you're not going to see the little bits that you've missed on the inside. Um, it is a personal preference thing. I still mask to the windows, just grab a little blade um, and then uh, use those and then just score around the windows um, and then peel the excess tape off so, so you get a nice clean look so that when you look inside um, when you look inside the car when it's painted because you've got about one mil of polycarb you'll have paint sitting here then the lex and then paint sitting here so it really does give it that 3d look from the paint kind of coming together so it adds that kind of effect and that's the reason why i try and keep the inside as clean cut as the outside but it is um, a personal preference um, however for the front lights because we've got molded bu molded buckets that go inside and um you know and there's all those 3d accessories that come with it we've used the actual main light buckets on the inside and then i've used the one inch masking tape on the outside and as you can see i've got two little tabs here um, little it's just a personal tip and trick uh, for that one is because once it's on there you can hold it and uh, while you paint um, yeah, you know yeah, so yeah. it's like you see so you can sit there and it gives you something to hang on to because when you start painting the outside whatever you sit it on you're going to get overspray all the way around so or at least you're just handling it once you've yep. finished yeah yeah because there's nothing worse than if you try and put your hands on the inside like that to pick it up and then to try and put it down that you again you paint on the inside and because you've got the accelerants inside the paint um, that make it go cold the curing time on the paint on the inside is going to be longer than what it would normally be because you've got two, you've got well, three coats of paint on the inside plus the coat on the outside. So the body is going to be very cold from the accelerants. Um, and that's why having that little tab there on the mm -hmm. lights, it just, it just helps you, you know, it helps you place it down or, you know, uh, and then you can just use your finger on the mask on the outside to kind of manipulate it when you want to put it down to the table and you're not going to put fingerprints in it. Yep, brilliant idea. All right, so we're about to get to the painting process now. Um, so what we'll do is again, um, I think Bruce is just going to take some stills as, as a paint. Um, and uh, yeah, and we'll do it like, you know, uh, a, a small little 30 second video of, I guess the the, uh, the processes now. Each, each little step. Each little step, yep. So what we're doing is because yeah, um, as you remember, like as I spoke earlier, you on the inside, you're painting your primary color outwards and then you're backing it um, to give it the thickness of color. On the outside, you're putting your layers down from the back to your final coat on the outside. So, um, so the inside's different to the outside. So the first coat you do is a very light dust coat. So you're not trying to cover everything uh, in the one in the first coat. Um, the things that I focus on when I'm painting uh, your primary coat are the corners and the creases. So mm. things like in the corners of the roof, um, the corners of the guards, the corners of the bonnet, and just all the corners um, because 
if you put paint there to start with, as you start to run out of paint um, towards the end, it's easier to kind of flick, but most people, when they forget to do um, the creases first, when you run out and you put the body on, when you hold it up to the sun, yeah. you'll see a nice clear line through all the creases that you've missed and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. So, um, so it's important to be focusing on the crease areas yep, first. Yep, and because yeah, because and because we're doing multiple layers of paint, um, these big flat surface areas, yeah, like you can, you can put a lighter coat on and it's still gonna give you the depth of color, whereas in the creases you need to have a heavy yeah. coat to give it the depth in the, in, in the um, hard to get places. And obviously too, once you start painting the big panels and you try and put your hand inside holding your can, you, you don't want to be touching the shell and to, you, if you go too close and you get a big splatter of paint and it starts to run you don't want that either no. so this is the time where you can get you get in nice and close you can put your little little spots of paint in the hard to reach places yeah. and you don't have to worry that if you touch the body that it's not going to um that you're not going to like leave any fingerprints handprints pull paint off or anything like that yep. so sweet so um yeah so the step one is going to be the clear coat on the inside so we're going to put the clear coat down um again tried and tested um, the, the Repco clear coat. Um, still, personally, I recommend the, the Tamiya one. Yeah. Um, or, you know, if you're using the spastics range, then whatever the appropriate spastics um, flat clear is um, to, to work with the paint. Um, but uh, in this case, yeah, we're going with the Repco one. Uh, so we'll put the clear coat down first. We'll put the, uh, then put the first color down. Then we'll put the second color down. Then we'll move to the outside. And then we're gonna put the first color down, the second color down, the third color down. Um, and then, um, yeah, it's going to be uh, just a nice big long curing process. That's it. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right, everyone, so, uh, so we've got the body. So we put our, um, our matte finish down so you can now see that the body's got that real cloudy um, look to it and that's on the inside. All right, so we've got our first color. So um, in this, because we're doing the inside, so we're painting your primary color to your backing. All right, so what we're going to do, as I mentioned, we're going to target all the crease areas. So just by putting your dust coat down, so with a dust coat, it's just gonna be something as simple as, that's heaps. For your first coat um obviously we're gonna do it across the whole body but when it comes to um like we do that do the front bit um you know we do do the guards now because it's coming out a bit splattery but again we're going for a patinaed look do not worry about that that is going to work in your favor later um obviously if we're going to do a show body or something that's um looking like it's coming off the showroom floor like a drift car body or something like that you you, you want to get away from that so um so we're going through so we're going to so we again you're holding the holding one part of the body that you're going to work on last which for me is the back because then when it comes to doing here i can hold the front or i can hold it that way and then i can work around the back and i've got the room so because we're going to be doing um the the first color which in this case is the copper uh, so we're going to just just try and get the paint into this corner like that's ample for, for your first coat. Um, so we're doing the, um, I'll try and do it so you guys can see. Um, so we're doing, now because we've already put the, um, because we've already put the clear coat down, so this stuff is gonna stick to the clear coat, which is good. But again, as you can see here too, like it's coming out quite thick, quite hard. So we definitely won't be touching that now, even on the second coat, we'll come back to that on the third. Um, but we're just making sure that we get the paint into those hard to get spots. Um, and then for the dust coat now, so it's only going to be a matter of, so probably about 30 centimeters away. And we just, now you'll know if you've done your dust coat right, 
because from the inside you'd be like oh that's pretty that's like you know there's not really much to see but then when you go and you put the body down it should almost be almost fully colored now because we haven't painted the outside this is what we mean by like that nice clear coat um, because we've taken the protective film off um, and we're going to let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes um, between coats now if you're going to do it um, if you want to do it quicker uh, if you see at the end of the cage there you've got the direct sunlight what I would be suggesting you do is put the body in the sunlight first get the body get the lexin hot um, obviously not to the point where it's melting but you get it to the point where it's um, as you spray it you can physically see the paint is like drying almost straight away um, then you can kind of do like thicker coats quicker um, but again if it's your first time doing this again don't rush it just just you've got like allocated day for the painting and the cutting and the prep um, because um, like the masking inside and out was probably half an hour 40 minute job uh, and that's me who's done it a few times so if you're learning to do it yourself like you've got to try and as you'll see in the photos you're kind of twisting yourself up on weird angles to try and get in there um, and that's what you uh, uh, need to allow the time for so what we're going to do is we're just going to leave that here now we're not going to worry uh, too much about putting it in the sun um, because we are going light coats um, for the whole process so uh, we put the clear coat down we put the first dust coat down we're then going to um, have a look um, in about 10-15 minutes do the old touch dry because it's a dust coat it's gonna, it'd probably almost be ready to go now but we um, we don't we want to make sure we got no run so when you sand it back because it's this is the inside we can't change this now once we've done it um, but you can see looking at the body too like you can see that I've hit the corner spot so like the bit at the top there um, right in the corner in the front like the the paint is a lot thicker there because I want to make sure that when we do it and we um, when we do the rub back process the, the parts that sit up higher are going to cop the most rubbing so therefore you want to make sure that's got the best paint job all the way through because that's um, that's the part of the stuff that we're going to hit so uh, yep so what we'll do is again um, we'll get some photos up in this process and um, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me paint the whole thing but um, yeah I'll see you in a couple of moments all right all right cool so we've uh, we've let it dry um, we've you know touch dry no fingerprints so what we're going to do now uh, because the paint as i mentioned is thicker in these corners is now we're going to just infill um well not sorry not infill we're going to do another dust coat but now of the the bigger real estate pieces um first thing you want to do before you spray again so you don't get clumps tip the can upside down and just give it a little discharge what that's going to do is that gets rid that purges all the paint to get stored up in the top of the cap and uh, you'll notice that when you spray after you stop spraying you'll see the little blue tip on the can it'll just start bubbling away and that's paint just sitting in here being stored up so um, so what we're doing now is um, always give your can a shake before you spray um, let the agitator which is a little ball in there do its thing um, we're now just then going to again just dust coats So you want to try and make this one relatively even but as you can see when you hold it up to the light you can still see there's a lot of sky you can see through it um, and obviously you don't want to go too heavy on the inside because you also need this can to do the outside so you want to you want to do under half because you want to make sure that the outside is the is definitely the right way um, so i've done that So as you can see, I'm not holding my finger down, just like a one continuous spray. It's lots of little, lots of little ones. Working my way around, um, just doing the big panels. Um, now, after you've got, after you've painted a few bodies and you've got some, um, some like can control, you can, I w normally don't recommend it for new users to spray this way and then spray this way because as you spray this way you get a lot more paint a lot quicker whereas this way you can do much broader strokes and, and flare the paint out so because you will need to go up and down for these corners so again you you kind of just you're kind of going down using the same like slow process uh, but as you can see the paints come out a lot thicker and a lot more splotchy there 
that it has across the top. Um, that'll all get, you know, from the outside, you, you kind of can't see it. Um, but it's going to be back and then it's going to be painted on the outside. So again, it's not too much of a concern. But always good. But this, is, this is the best way to learn can control. So, um, and then we just get a little dust coat on the roof. Um, also too, uh, you can see here on the bottom of the windshield, just there with my fingers moving across, we want to make sure too that you get in there. Now, as I mentioned, you put your hand in there now, you're going to end up with paint all over yourself. So again, that's why you want to have like the little tabs, like you get, and again, now at the top of the window, which is tucked right up in there, you're going to have to wait until that's dry so you can put your hand in there so you're not bouncing off the sides. So um, other than that, that's pretty much, and it almost, like from the outside, it almost looks like a complete color. Whereas yeah. you can see from the inside, you don't, and that's what I mean, you don't have to use a lot of paint to to get your, your base color. Because at the end of the day, this is what's gonna be the color that we're gonna use to be like your deep base rust. Um, so we're literally going to sand it back almost to that color in certain spots and then depending on how much pressure we use on the sandpaper depends on how many layers we cut through. So um, cool. So we'll let that dry for 15 and then we'll be back uh, for the third coat. Sweet. All right, cool. So we're just going to do the, uh, the final now. We're going to fill in this obviously too cautious to how much paint we're using. Um, so we'll, uh, yeah, we'll get into the, the final uh, base coat. All right, cool. So copper's all done. Um, so that's down. Now we're going to put our second color down. Now we're going to re repeat the same process. So we're going to do your dust coat of silver. Um, obviously you can get a little bit more um, heavy with the dust coats. Like you probably don't have to do three stages. You can just do the two. Um, but again, you want to make sure you've got a nice even spread because the silver in here will adhere to the, um, the, uh, the original color. Now the good thing is too, if you do get silver coming through, like you haven't done, like there's parts of here, like when you hold it up to the sun, you'll see that some parts are thicker than others. Now that's okay because what we're going to do is the parts that are thicker than others are gonna be the parts where we're gonna be rubbing back. So we want the good, we want a good strong color. The sides here, we're not gonna be putting a lot of wear on it. So, um, so yeah, again, you don't have to be worried, but when you hold it up to the sun, you will see all the, the like I guess all the parts that you've missed all gone a little bit thin on. But when, when you're down crawling, you're not going to see that. Yeah. Um, when you're looking down. So, so again, so we'll do the first, so we'll do the first of the dust. So, as you, so as you can see, so still, so not really going in this particular one to aim for heavy in the corners because we wanted the, 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 the copper or the rust. Now uh, you can also use, there's a primer that to me uses, it's called a red oxide, uh, which you can use, uh, which is just a really flat, um, kind of like a red dirt color. Um, so it's more of a brown as opposed to the metallic. I like the metallic because when you go and weather it and you add your Tamiya rust orange to it, it really goes like a goldy, orangey rust. So you can see, depending on how much um, of the weathering powder you use, you can see the difference in colors. Like it goes thicker and lighter and it's just, it's all in all, it's pretty cool. So we're just um, just gonna silver back um, the, uh, the paint. Um, and um, yeah, as you, as you can see, look, you know, with this particular color and this coat, because we've got already um, the copper down, um, we're still not going heavy on it. Um, as in, we're not going a lot of paint in a lot of areas quickly. Um, we're just doing the, the dust coat. Um, now one place, because we're going, um, you know, we've got the side steps here as well. One place you can go quite um, solid with the silver would be on the steps because when we rub those back, we want to rub them back to silver. We don't want to rub them back to rust. We, you, you kind of want to, you know, allow for that, um, that kind of effect. Again, uh, I'll unpack that further, but um, we'll get in. Uh, we've nearly done the first coat of this anyway, while talking. Um, and so the reason we're using a silver um, backing color is because we want to make sure that 
um, it really brings out the um, the yeah we really want to bring out the depth in that um, in that copper color now if you it, it, don't know how you're gonna see that with through the camera but you can see where I've gone thin on the inside you can see the silver starting to come through so this is kind of another cool area because you're already getting your color changes so when you rub it back you're really going to get a big mix of colors um, I kind of feel a bit like one of those master chef you know preparing <laughs> preparing yeah. a meal um, so I don't have one I prepared earlier um, so we are doing this um, pretty much in front of you guys at the moment so and even just those because we're only doing light coats um, even just from talking to you guys after letting it sit for a couple of minutes, like the paint adhering to other paint um, is going to be, um, you know, is, is going to happen pretty easily. Again, the trick is not going, um, not going too heavy in one spot because as we're spraying this on to the body, like it is going to be um, somewhat affecting the, I guess the, um, like the curing of the original color we put down. So you don't want to go too heavy and have the whole thing just drip as a big sludge. Um, so we're going to leave it at that uh, for now. Um, and we're going to let that sit. Uh, and this is the reason why we need the, the long curing time because we've got um, two lots of paint on there. Well, and then obviously the clear coat we put down first, um, but you can see by putting the silver backing, it's also allowed for a nice metallic um, finish to come out. And now that once that's it, what we're going to do is we don't necessarily have to wait for that to dry um, because now we're going straight to the outside. So that will dry in time while we're doing the outside. You've just got to be careful, obviously, when you're manhandling the body now to do the outside that you don't, you know, end up peeling paint off and stuff with fingerprints and palm prints. So, all right, so when you go get the um, the next round of paint all set up, good to go. And uh, we'll see you there. All right, cool. So while the inside's um, curing, um, and doing its thing, as I mentioned, like it's painted hearing when you physically feel the body, it is quite cool. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're doing the step, the step um, so that was from the, uh, I guess from the outside in. Now from the outside, we're gonna do the inside to the out. So we're gonna put another layer of copper um, all the way down. Um, and then we're going to put the silver on top and then we're gonna finish with our primary coat of the, of the car. Um, so pretty much, um, I guess we'll start with a, with a, with a, I guess the front section now. Again, being a dust coat um, that we're putting on at first, um, you'll sit, you'll notice. I'm not. I'll leave. I'll leave that to sit for a little bit because you'll notice that as that dries, you're going to see a difference in colour. You're going to see like a matte finish versus the glossy finish on the, um, on the body. So. We'll um, try and speed this up a little bit. So you can start to see here, like the difference. So you've got your plastic that I haven't painted there and the plastic yep. I have painted there. So you can see you can see how the polycarb gives it that gloss look, but even just your PS paint in an untreated way is giving it its, um, yeah, you know, it, it's giving it more of a satin finish now. Yep, and so, you can see that quite well. Yep. And, um, and you'll also notice too, like all the, the orange peel kind of effect. Now I purposefully um, didn't wash my hands again for the outside because that's going to add to all the rusty texture that we're going to apply as we rub back through. Like you're going to get, um, as you look down the profile, it's still going to look smooth, but as you actually go to look at it, you're going to see the, like I guess the blotchiness and the different colors creating that rust effect. So. Um, again, this is just, there's no right or wrong way to create the rust effect. It's just a matter of doing what's right from the pictures and the research that you've done to get the look that you want to get from the body. If that makes sense, I'll try and add that in the comments below just so you can go back and revisit that statement. Um, so again, we're, um, you don't want to go too heavy with the copper on the step because we do want that to stay um, silver. But when we do rub it back, you do want to have just a little bit of silver there. Um, and as you can see by the window mask, you can see that I'm not going heavy um, on the paint um, on the outside because we've got the same color coming through from the inside and then the same color coming out from the outside. So we're kind of just applying enough to give it, um, just to give it overall that matte look. Um, now just so I don't get, um, break my fingers. 
So the panels that we are going to rub back, we are going to go quite heavy with the paint. So uh, on the outside, so we're going to do um, quite heavy on. Uh, we're going to do quite heavy on the on the roof, on the bonnet, on the guards, and around the doors and the and the quarters. Um, because that's that's the effect that we're going for now um, again up to you if you're doing dust coats you can because I've worked on the front and now I've moved to the back you can kind of just keep going through the process if you um, again experienced painter done this a lot um, you know you also now have to realize that you can't just pick the body up so you also want to make sure that if you're painting outside that if it's a rainy day like it has been up in here in Queensland for the last you know 24 years then um, it can you know if you pick it up you're gonna leave fingerprints so keeping all that in mind we're just gonna keep working keep working the body now this is where the little tabs at the front come into play because that's where you can now move your car from uh, so you don't get now now that we've left the back going back to the front um, and we're just going to keep dusting it up and obviously too you can see as you spray where the paints falling so if um, if you need more paint obviously you come closer less paint you move further away so there is going to be um, that kind of process So we're pretty much at the point now where we're not going to put any more brown down. We're going to have to let this sit for a bit. Um, also too, something to keep in mind is how heavy you go on the paint on the outside will also affect how um, the detail of the mold. Like in this one in particular, you've got a grill on the front and on the top. If you really go too heavy on the paint, you're going to fill that in and it's going to become more of a less distinctive so you can see up here that that like air, air vent kind of thing up at the top so if the more you paint on that the the less noticeable that's going to be again and that's where it comes down to where am i going to weather um if you want more paint around there that's cool um we i do have a little bit of a um a little trade secret uh well that i've come across that i'll uh, when it comes to the weathering process which will be in a couple of days um because we need to let it cure um, we will then go and, and I'll show you different ways like when it comes to panel marking and everything like that to make it pop without making it look fake. So um, cool, so we're just going to let this sit now. Um, we'll put the uh, layer of silver down and then we'll come back to you once the car's uh, completely silver, ready to go for the green. All right, that's bloody excellent. So these are new cans. As you can see that the, the you can see how the um, like the texture of the paint yep for the new cans um, versus the old cans like it's coming out a much it's yep. like it's a much it's much more of a mist as opposed to a um, yeah as a being globby
Hey guys, welcome back to RC For Me Man. Um, all right, so we've uh, done the silver on the outside, we've done the copper on the outside, we've done the silver on the inside, so the car should look pretty much silver the whole way around. Um, obviously, if you can still see colors through the window mask, don't worry, they're coming off anyway. Um, so we've now got the primary color, which we're gonna paint. Um, so as you can see, this is where those tabs around the headlights really, really work. Um, so we can put that one back down and um, and now we're doing so again sticking with the same principles um, this paint's going to stick to this really really easily because there's lots and lots of paint for it to adhere to but still we don't want to rush it because we want to get a nice clean paint job we don't want any paint runs um, obviously too there's a lot of paint on here now so you've got the clear coat the inside then you've got the copper in and out then you've got the silver in and out and we're now about to put the green on the out and then we've got a clear coat to go over the top of that again so there's a lot of paint on this body um, and that's why, so the next process, once we've finished here, I'll be handing back to RC Forby man. He's gonna chuck it under the heat lamps and, um, and then he's uh, making his trip up uh, to see me at my house uh, in a couple of days, once it's all cured. And then we're gonna go back through the, the weathering and the rub through process. So, um, so again, so the first coat of the uh, primary color, in this case, it is going to be racing green. Um, we are again, gonna do the dust coat first um, because we now, um, if you if you want to come in and have a close look, you can now start to see that we've put a lot of paint and we're starting to lose. Uh, when you're just looking straight down on the body, we're starting to lose that grill and we're starting to lose this little panel here. Yeah. And we've got to be careful that we don't go too hard because if we lose them, you can't really get them back. But the good thing is, once we add the panel accents to it, um, it's going to bring them out in very subtly without kind of being like a wow that's a massive grill so um cool so we're gonna get at it so um so again give the can a good shake um stir it up mix it up and uh and away we go so again dust coat um what we're doing here is we're not trying to because it's again because it's oh, we're painting the outside now, we're not trying to get um, into all the creases and stuff like that. Um, because at the end of the day, the creases are where the, where the rust is going to be. So if you don't get as much in there, it's going to make the next process easier for you. But you still at least want to give it colour. Um, so we're just going to dust over it. So, so this whole process now, so we started, we started this job at 10 o'clock. Uh, now I've, as I've mentioned before, like I've done a lot of weathering bodies, custom paint jobs, everything like that. So we're now at four hours into this. Um, and this is with all the paint and we've still got then to unmask it. We've then got to weather it. Um, if we're going to um, add like little highlights and if we're going to do things again there's still at least another four or five hours worth of work in this body so you really need to allocate time to this you can't it's not something you can do in a day um, it's not something I would recommend um, trying uh, like if you just if you if you want to rush it and you want to get it on get someone to do it for you so then you can literally just pick it up and get it done but um, the cool the cool process is what's going to happen on Sunday when we watch we watch this car um, in its nice matte finish, looking green, and then we hit it with the um, the wet and dry. We start to rub it back, and you can start to watch this thing change color, and you watch the, the rust start to come through the car. It's you you won't be able to not smile at it because it is such a cool process. Um, and the good thing is, as I mentioned, there's no right or wrong, so. If you, you know, and that's where before we do the rub back, we go back to our photos, we have a look, we work out where we're going to rub back, we work out, um, have a plan of attack on, you know, and also too, like how much rust you want to put on it. Um, like if you really want it to be like a, a like a barnyard find, 
then again, you're doing a lot of rubbing back. Um, if you want it to have like just like like basic skin cancer, it's a little bit of um, uh, rubbing back if you really want to give it some real big depth into the primary color all the way through to the rust. And then when you weather it um, to give it that like caramelized yellowy rust brown color, then again, you, you're picking spots, you're, you're going back to photos and, uh, and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, so definitely the process, the next process is, is, is where I find the, the, the most fun when you really watch it start to take shape. So you can see um, with the paint job, again, it is the dust coat. Um, where um, that's why it's partially silver uh, and green. Uh, again, because it's about to go under heat lamps, we are getting some 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 grey clouds over the top. So we're not going to rush it. If we need to call it a day, we'll call it a day. Um, but that's the reason why now with so much paint going on in the last hour onto this car, this is the reason why we now it's like almost the same, if not double the cure time. So if it goes on for an hour, then it sits for two hours before we work with it. So. We'll get this um, get this green finished, and um, we'll uh, yeah we'll go and um, get it under lights, and then uh, yeah we'll see you guys back in a couple of days for um, for some weathering tips and tricks. Have a good day. All right, cool. So we finished the green. Uh, that's down now. Um, you can just tell by looking at the at the paint job that this car is still very very wet. Um, like because we put a lot of paint on the outside it's very thick you can start to see um you know you can start to see in certain lights you know um things starting to disappear under the paint like you're losing some of the detail um but don't stress because we will get that back i'll show you how to get that back um but you can also see too from as i mentioned now with the group like now that we put the green on there you can see that the natural finish of the tamiya ps range is a kind of a satin finish it's not it's not a dull matte finish that's what we're using the the matte clear or the flat clear for but it is um it does come out as a satin finish so if you do like that satin look then yeah definitely um definitely like have a go um at painting your body on the outside um there's definitely plenty of um plenty of options like this is a premium body uh the mst one like because the attention to detail the 3d accessories that it comes with the trailer light buckets the whole shebang is a, is a brilliant kit. It, it truly looks amazing. Um, and uh, for other photos, check out the Lighthouse RC page. We did, we posted up a blue one um, a couple of weeks ago, which again, same process. And then you saw the step-by-step -step, um, photos of after it's been rubbed through. But the good thing with Bruce here and RC Forby Man is we're going to teach you guys like ways, tips and tricks and how things, like how the kits work and honestly the only way you're going to learn how to do what we do is just by doing it yeah um great way to um to have a crack is a lot of hobbyists uh, and hobby shops will sell um like just the like the team corrales the um there's the cheaper range of plastics um like lexan bodies they retail for in that 50 60 dollar mark there are 40 series around there as well that aren't as nice as this um, so definitely grab one and have a play with it. Um, you know, like it's, uh, it's definitely a, a cool way to learn. Um, again, when it comes to the patina look, there is no right or wrong way. Like it's, um, it's about what the, the photos that you found online that you want to, um, turn your truck into. That's, that's the right way. Um, because it's your truck. And, uh, and for those of you who know me from Lighthouse, I'm like, I'm a hundred percent loving the like i love when people make something their own they don't just buy a car bolt a couple of accessories on chuck it in the show and shine because i'm like there's you know i'm like there's nothing in that like whereas if you make your own swags you make your own storage boxes um you know for for like spare winch lines you go to your fishing shop and you just use your um your steel trace it's got a wax coating so it's not going to rust you um all that kind of stuff things that you can do to make it your own. That's what I personally have found to be some of the coolest trucks out there are the ones that are um, made from household items, not necessarily 3D printed either. Um, especially in the crawler world, the 3D printed stuff doesn't have the integrity when it comes to a rollover or a cartwheel. For those of you who've um, done the 3D printing and put the accessories on and cartwheeled, you'll know straight away that it doesn't matter how thick you try and make the print, it is a fibrous print and it will snap. Um, you know, the only real way to get integrity out of 
um, I guess the the molded accessories is to go for injection molded plastic or to get a um, or resin molded um, other than that you're really not going to get the integrity um, or yeah racing do a great range of like rubber snorkels which are unreal because as you roll over they just bend and then bend back um, you know very cool thing so but um, so for the first uh, I guess first day of this two-day job um, we've done the, we've had a look at cutting the body out. Um, what we'll do is we'll go back through this series and we'll timestamp too. So if you want to know about cutting body, um, you know, in the comments below that you'll see, uh, it'll be whatever the time is uh, for cutting the body, different methods to cut, um, masking, painting, um, the step-by-steps like the dust coats and working your way up thicker, thicker, thicker. Um, and then for the, the day two, which is going to be in a couple of days time, uh, we'll sit there and we'll go through weathering, um, sandpaper to use, um, and all that kind of fun stuff. It's going to be great. So, uh, so massive shout out to RC Forby man, uh, for having me out here to, um, to work with him and to, uh, to work with you guys too. And just, um, no share, worries, some, buddy. share some knowledge on, uh, on what, I, um, on the hobby. I have been doing this for 31 years. So, uh, not many of us in the industry that have been around that long. So, um, yeah, hope this has been helpful and um, and insightful. Uh, looking forward to work. Look, looking forward to you guys tuning in to see the finished product, and uh, definitely looking forward to seeing this thing out and about on the trails. It's going to be great. So, uh, so from Maddie from Lighthouse RC, we'll talk to you then. Catch gotcha. up. Thanks, Maddie.